Keep your eyes on the stars, people. Keep your feet on the ground as we continue to take the right steps this week. AKA, yeah. your face. Mifi, how did you yeah. <laughs> Oops. Your face, your shoes, your face in the stars, your feet on the ground. Like yeah. she said, welcome to the second lap. Of course, <laughs> undiluted family nourishment. Uh, exactly. It's uh, 45 minutes of what we have. We had a wonderful one hour, yeah. And uh, there's quite a lot we've spoken about, but then it's going to be another wonderful 45 minutes. A lot of reasons to smile. We're alive, we're grateful. Yes, we are. Yes, yeah, so halfway, exactly halfway through the month of April. Woo! Before you know, now hop, skip, and jump uh, may don't land. Too. Yeah, so 15th of the month. Imagine uh, that. You know, you know what just went to my mind. What? That's like 30 days of September. April, okay, April 30. <laughs> so yeah, 15. Halfway, like she said. Exactly halfway. Oh. My name is Mike Messi And I'm Tita Laya Oing. So remember, you can use our hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TBC across all social media platforms to be a part of the best breakfast show on Nigerian TV. Okay, Winfrey has not uh, walked this. <laughs> what, really? Wow. Oh, you've not seen her so much. You think it's easy to look that good? Oh, That's okay. walk. Uh, Tell it's him. walk. That's walk. It's Tell walk. him. Yes, so. Uh -uh. Okay. I'm not only paid to speak, Mike. Uh, I'm paid to look good. To be here. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. All right. You're doing SME. You're doing performance. <laughs> You're doing uh, motivation. All of that. To be here today. Yeah. yeah. But then, hey, come on. You can watch us absolutely anywhere across the world via mobile app, which you can download via the Apple. Uh, store yeah. on the Google Play Store. Yeah, please sh send us shout outs, prayers, pictures, whatever you want to post. Just make sure you use our hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC and tag us at TVC Entertainment underscore. All right, so the second lap will kick off with uh, a unique combination not only of Afrobeat, High Life, and Jazz, but also the ritualistic drumming of Ekombi. The result is urgent and highly energetic yet spiritual. His compositions reflecting his heritage, life, and philosophy of goodwill. For a musical performance, we yeah. have Ebon Etuk. Earlier on, we talked about uh, the possibility of someone's confidence being completely shattered by a, a religious leader there. Uh, let's see what it takes to boost our self-confidence, especially uh, in different environments like that. Is it in the workplace, at home, on stage when giving testimony? Mm. We'll have that conversation later on. Rest in the name of the Lord. <laughs> uh -huh. Mm. And then of course we have SME or Latunji or Lacheon of HOG Furniture will be here. I'll talk about uh, his business, of course, using it as some sort of a benchmark to teach us how to do business, to learn about the challenges of business and to grow in business. All right. Yeah. Okay. We'll take a look at the days weather. Tomorrow, don't forget, we're talking David o. Really? Mm. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But well, hey, come on. Uh, let's take a look at what the days weather and, of course, the rest of the week will be like.
Thank you so much for staying with us. And Mike, I'm seated here now. Are you happy? <laughs> Anyways, right now, it's still a beautiful Monday edition of Wake Up Nigeria. And I have with me a very interesting personality who goes by the name Etsuk Ubong. And he's here to talk to me about his journey in the music industry as long as much as his philosophies and things like that. Welcome to Wake Up Nigeria. Thank you. Thank How are you doing this morning? Very well. Very okay. Well. I like your getup, by the way. <laughs> Thank I you. Like the fabric seems very intentional. Right. What would you say? What would you say your your style is? Uh, basically, think Africa, leave Africa, buy Africa. Oh, so. think African, leave African, buy African. Very yeah. simple, straightforward, and plus a very strong message. Mm -hmm. That's good. So now tell me. So now um, you literally um, are going to be performing a song for us later on today. Tell yeah. me about this. So what's the title of the song? The title of the song is um, Equal Ima, Equal Fun, which right. means... Um, Song of love, song of friendship. Song of love, song of friendship. friendship. So is it song of love and song of friendship as we already know it? Or is this something that have a deeper meaning? Uh, not at all. You know, just <laughs> surface just level. It is. Yeah. Amazing. So tell me, I mean, where did the music career start for you? Uh, for me, um, aside from my mom and the church, you know, uh, I was self-taught. Yeah, aside with the conga drums, you know, and um, after... One Sunday service, my mom took, to me, took me to the trumpet player in the church and she was like, this is my son, mm -hmm. I need you to teach him how to play the trumpet. Okay. And that's how I started. But I started pr playing professionally um, with Victor Olaya at Stadium Hotel. Um, then from there, I played with Femi Kuti for about two years at the Shrine. Mm -hmm. um, before I started my own band, the Ethic Philosophy, after I went to South Africa to study, I came back, I started my band, Ethic okay. Philosophy, and then um, I opened the Truth Village, you know, in Lagos here, yeah, somewhere around okay. Surulay, where I, I play two nights a week, every Wednesday night and Sunday night. Oh, amazing. You know, Definitely um, would love to visit that. Yeah, you should. Soon, you should. I should, right? Yeah. Amazing. So now we talk about how a lot of people have, a lot of artists, let me say, right. have their foundation from the church, right? right? But along the way, some, yeah, some stay mm -hmm. the course, but some literally go into other things. Now, you said you actually um, um, started the Etuk philosophy. Yeah. Et so, and that is you, right? Yes, yes. Et So your philosophy. So right. tell me about the Etuk philosophy. I mean, for me, I, it's, it's still like the basic thing, you know, mm -hmm. um, but I feel like um, humans are distracted, you know, however, okay. with Survivor, and then we forget about the need for us to make the world a better place, mm -hmm. you know. So um, the music, which is... Um, basically african oriented mm -hmm. you know um which also reflect the african education aesthetics and all that you know so um with art music it's um and the philosophy how we can make the world a better place the world is distracted we are one people of the world and we ought to be responsible for the planet earth okay yes you know okay. there's so much destruction already we've caused a lot of harm okay you know, so it's more like um refreshing and trying to like remind you about the need to make the world a better place okay. where we can live in and dwell in okay so this philosophy what do you say is mostly influenced by africa africa yeah. okay okay in what sense because i mean we talk about i mean a, a lot of um a lot of lies have been told about Africa, okay. about who we are, mm -hmm. you know, have been exploited and all that, the mm -hmm. problems of Africa. Yes. And um, like I said, again, it's an education also. Yeah. Musically, we talk about the food we eat, um, how we dress, you know, how we've been exploited as well, yeah. the societal issues in Africa, the everyday life, basically, mm -hmm. you know, the also how we live every day how we live every yeah. day amazing and i love the fact that you're actually focused on changing that narrative right right and pushing the truth about africa about how strong and powerful we actually are now let's go into your music what right. would you say your music is what how would you like i mean we know the general i mean when you hear it you know yeah. Afrobeat, jazz yeah. all that right but you when you think about your music mm -hmm. what do you want it to be i want it to be you know on a very large scale widely accepted Okay. You know, just like uh, the Afrobeat, pop, you know. So I created this genre of music from the influences I've experienced and worked, you know, on, played, yeah. bands have played and people, musicians have experienced. Yeah. Um, Afrobeat, jazz, I like pop, you know, so so um, I coined this one at music, you know, music, yeah, because okay. of its um, rhythmic structure, you okay. know, um, which is quite unique. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, I mean, like, the, the music being out there, and um, being widely accepted, just like Afrobeat, fellas like Afrobeat, Af yeah. Amazing. And I honestly cannot wait for you to actually perform. <laughs> I'm actually really looking forward because you come across as a really spiritual person. Do you dance? Well, 
<laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. Are you, uh, you, you, know, you dabble like here and there. Okay, yeah. I really can't wait for you to perform. Okay, now let's talk about, I mean, you schooling now. So you say you went to school in South Africa. Yeah. So what was that about? What did you study? Did you study, was it more music in class? Yeah, music actually. Okay. Music. music. Um, mm -hmm. Then jazz, um, jazz performance. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what I studied in South Africa. Okay. South Africa was interesting, you know. Um, different culture exposed me and opened me up to how they think and their way of life there. Especially about the African consciousness, you know. Mm -hmm. Because there was a lot of um, things talking um, influence of decolonizing the, the syllabus in school. Okay. So, um, yeah, it was towards that direction, the time I was there studying. You were there. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful interview with you. And uh, definitely we'll be able to get the message of your music right. during your performance right about now. Thank you mm -hmm. so much. Thank you. And uh, we'll go on a quick break. And when we come back, Etuk will be performing. Do stay with us. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas, it shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw earthen material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move way in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known, for when the wailing stops, the pieces settle down in abject beauty erected for a century of a century. Speaking advocating, protesting, as the arts are meant to be. Lagos is the most visited state. Hmm. So, have you ever wondered what happens behind the curtains of a man's mind? Or perhaps you're one of those who wonder what men talk about when they gather. Well, here goes. Imagine what it takes to put together the perfect cocktail. Or maybe mocktail. We need a bit of sports, a sprinkling of current affairs, some very deep topical issues and last but not the least a healthy dose of grumbling of those we love to hate and yes you guessed it women
Welcome back. Now we're here to talk about self-confidence on motivation today. Uh, have you actually considered the fact that it's not other people that should make you confident in yourself, that you need to dig deep and find it yourself? But how do you begin? What are those pointers that we need to sort of build or boost self-confidence in ourselves? That's what we're here to talk about with Mr. Fola Daniels Adelesi, friend of the house, motivational speaker, writer, and so much more. It's great to have you back. Thank you for having me again. Mr. Fola, yeah. we mentioned earlier on the show today that uh, people's confidence has yeah. been bruised, yeah. uh, possibly by their own parents possibly. Uh, when growing up. Uh, maybe in secondary school, yeah. maybe even at the tertiary level, yeah. OND, HND versus BSC, BA, yeah. and the like. Yeah. Um, how do we begin to build those blocks of self-confidence? Okay, so there are quite a number of ways to work on your self-confidence. The first and the most important thing is to note that what other people tell you is not as important as what you tell yourself. Okay. So the problem begins... Where, when you allow what other people tell you, define what you're saying to yourself. Okay. If people say that you, you never do well, and you assimilate it, and you begin to tell yourself, well, they said I can't do well, and yeah. so it means that I can't do well, it then begins to affect your self-confidence. Mm -hmm. But if people tell you you can't do well, and you have made up your mind that you're going to prove them wrong, you realize that it's not going to affect your self-confidence. Well, for those who have had their egos bruised by their parents, it's a lot more difficult. It's not that easy. Some of them will need therapy. And some of them may not necessarily need it. They just need a change of environment. Okay. But for those who had it tough, they definitely need therapy to get out of that experience. And some people, a little trigger would even bring them back to that issue. So generally, anybody who has had a tough parenting experience... Yeah they would need therapy. And I recommend that they keep reading, they spend a lot of time uh, using positive affirmation okay. for themselves. So that would gradually help them out of that situation. But if it's not an issue of parenting, for some people, you just need to work on your personal hygiene True. to improve your self-confidence. Take, yeah. for example, okay. I know that when I wear something new, yeah. it's like I have new springs under my feet. Yeah. Like a new outfit. Like a new outfit. Yeah, or a new hairdo. Exactly. Right? Okay. So you see that when maybe a woman has a new stilettos, yeah. it just feels different. There's a way you bounce differently. Yeah. You come to the office, if nobody has noticed it, yeah. you keep walking around. You guys, you notice this thing now. Mm. So one of the things you can do is to work on your personal hygiene. You probably want to take your clothes to the dry cleaners yeah. who can give you some starch and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. In fact, there was, I remember working in an office. There's this guy. I remember till this day, we used to call him Egedun. Wow. Meaning okay. that he will touch up his clothes so well <laughs> that when he's coming, oh, his clothes, everything will stand like, ah, yeah. ah, guy, <laughs> calm down. But one thing I noticed about him was that his self-confidence was always very high. Okay. So if you work on your appearance, if you work on your oral hygiene, if you work on just looking good, looking yeah. nice, it without helps. even spending too much, it helps your uh, self-esteem. Okay. The other thing that you can work on is your knowledge. Because sometimes you get into a room and everybody is talking and it looks like they know so much and you realize, wait a minute, how come they know so much and I'm not able to say anything? So if you're not able to contribute, what you then need to begin to work on is your own knowledge. Nobody knows it all. Sure. You can begin to develop yourself in a field where they don't even know anything and begin to educate those other people such that when you mention something, they're wondering, what's he talking about? Yeah, and How they did want you know to that? Yeah. So they want to listen to you. Yeah. So it's important to work on your knowledge. And in that case, books will help you. Sure. Self-help videos on YouTube, on other platforms, they will help you. And in the workplace, there... Uh, so we so can't, we can't I wanted, exhaust that yeah, one. So I wanted to talk a little bit about... Um, you mentioned we mentioned we sort of bordered on bullying earlier yes, on. Yes. yes. Um, now the issue of people noting that someone has a little less self confidence yeah. in themselves and maybe taking advantage of, of that. that. Mm -hmm. um, when they eventually realize that you know they're in that kind of bullying situation and they're trying to be confident in themselves, even though maybe something they're even telling them is making them even question their own knowledge. Yeah. You mentioned reading books, yeah. but you're questioning your own knowledge in a field. Uh, where do you begin to get out of that? So the first thing you need to know about every bully is that the day you confront them, that's the end of the bullying. Okay. 
if, if, if anybody has tried to bully you, mm. the day you stand up to them, that's the end of it. Okay. And in the corporate world as well, somebody keeps telling you, do this, do that, do this, do that, and they're shouting at you, you just need to speak up just once. Wow. And that's the, you will notice that in most cases, it's the end of it. So it, it may take a while. You, you probably want to be sure that you have done the right thing. And what exactly is the cause of bullying in the workplace? For, for example, they tell you this person has a foreign degree. Yeah. This person just came back from London, yeah. from U.S., from yeah. Florida, from Canada, wherever. Mm -hmm. And they just automatically believe that they are better than you. I even had a personal experience. It was the employer telling me hmm. from the first week of work, that this other guy has a master's degree from so 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 university in the united kingdom mm. and i'm like okay so what has that got to do with me wow now when it came to the time to perform mm. and to use some digital platforms to deliver for an event that we had in the office the guy didn't know what to do wow even so with the foreign degree i came to the rescue mm. so from that moment the person who had the foreign degree now started looking up to me okay so that's why that's why i said knowledge helps now in the workplace nobody can dispute results Mm. So long as you're a performer, mm. it doesn't matter what they want to do. They will acknowledge the fact that you have the results. The facts speak for themselves. As lawyers will say, arrest ipsa locuto. Mm. So if you are able to deliver results, yeah. your results will be a confidence booster. So what you then need to do is, what do I do in my office to deliver my KPIs, okay. to make sure that I'm hitting all my goals, I'm hitting all my target, yeah. whatever is expected of me, I'm able to deliver. Once you deliver, it boosts your self-confidence. I, I want to touch on, on this uh, workplace uh, imbalance that yeah. you mentioned. Yeah. It can be an issue for confidence. Like uh, if, for instance, someone with an HND, yeah. Uh, and someone with a BSc are yeah. uh, probably in the same office. office yeah. And maybe one is given a higher position than the other. But it, in the end, the person with the HND might have this maybe lack of confidence yeah. based on that. Uh, despite you know, being a better performer. Exactly. Probably despite being a better yeah. performer. Yeah. Um, so what do you advise someone like that to? Quickly, the, the first thing I, like I said, your self-confidence should not be about what you have or okay. don't have. Okay. If you settle that with yourself, you would never have problems in life because you realize that there will always be something that you don't have that someone else has. So if your self-confidence is in what you don't have, you would always have a problem. So let us first of all settle that one. Yeah, yeah. For example, there, there will be a kind of car that you have that I don't have. There will be a kind of house that you live in that I don't live in yet. So if my self-confidence is in external or material things, mm -hmm. I'm already in trouble. Mm -hmm. But that aside, we cannot deny the fact that these things are happening. So the number one thing is that there are universities, there are institutions that help you to regularize your degree or can upgrade your degree to a BSc. Okay. I don't think you should neglect that op op option or opportunity. Look for any one of them. So upgrade your degree and you are at par with them. Okay. Particularly if you're a better, performance, a better performer yeah. or your performance is at par with that person. Sure. If your performance is at par or you're a better person, please try as much as possible, upgrade your degree. Okay. Then the other thing is take short courses. Mm. There are courses you can take online today that in three hours you're done in four hours you're done so if you have more certifications more qualifications it can be a confidence booster but again i always advise make sure your confidence is in yourself okay not what you own but for the purpose of qualification yeah. and promotion yeah take those external degrees okay so i'm going to come back to what you own uh we have um, a lot of oambe parties over yeah. the weekend now there's a lot of clamp down on people yeah. that are spraying money and uh, up money up and down uh, at parties and all but it used to be like a status symbol yeah you know it um, and it's in some cases people with no degrees yeah. that were coming out to spray yeah uh people with probably not much educational background in church yeah um you know giving the biggest yeah, tax showing off and all that exactly um but these people have have boosted their confidence with maybe the finances. material things yeah so again it, it's a show of low self-esteem Wow. If everything you own depends on how much of wealth you can flaunt. Wow. In those parties, you realize that the biggest boys are always quiet. Mm. I've seen people with a lot of money drive very small cars. Mm. I've seen people with a lot of money that you look at them, you never can tell what they own until you get to know them or go to their estate and see what they control. Sure. And years ago, I even my own dad was driving a Volkswagen Beetle. 
but his clients would laugh at him and stuff like that until the day they want to come to his house wow. and the first thing they see is that it's his name that is on the street wow. and they are shocked they think wow. he's making a mistake no it's not a mistake that's where i live wow. and then they come they see his house that's so amazing. you should never allow what you own externally to <laughs> determine your self-esteem if that is the case there's a problem with your self-esteem you should be able to stay quiet in a room hmm. and allow your achievement speak for itself without you shouting Hopefully, we've been able to give you a few pointers on building your self-confidence today. Hopefully, you've taken some notes. You've jotted some things down. Thank you so much, Mr. for coming to talk to us. Share your thoughts with us. Use the hashtag WakeUpNigeria on TVC and let us hear them. Let's take a quick break. There's still more coming your way on Wake Up Nigeria. I am so sorry I'm late. I'm currently stuck in traffic. So, so sorry. Hi! We're about to start the show! Yay! Hey. Yeah! See, we're getting ready. We're gonna start. Show starts in three, two, and we're here again on your screens this beautiful morning doing what we do best. and that is why it is interesting. Well, Latunji Ola is one of HOG Furniture, one of the fastest growing furniture businesses in Nigeria today is here. It is great to have you. You are welcome. Thank you. You're the project Thank manager you. of HOG Furniture. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank wonderful. you for it having me. It is great. It is great to have you. So what, what, what is uh, what is HOG Furniture all about? Uh, yeah, HOG Furniture is strictly an online marketplace for okay. furniture, furniture and decor accessories. We built the business over a decade ago, satisfying Nigerians. You know, bringing the deck of fantasies to reality. Mm. And uh, so far, it all started actually in 2009 when the company was incorporated. We started as a brick and mortar. Uh, as time went by, uh, we actually uh, influenced by uh, parent company, Banner Plus, that there's a need for us to digitalize our sales channel. At that moment in time, you know, we only do brick and mortar. People come to buy imported furniture from us and all that in house production. Okay, just but like a warehouse, a, 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 a physical store. Eggs, physical like, store. Exactly. So as time went by, precisely 2015, it actually became strictly an e-commerce. You know, that's the thing. I, I want to hammer on this point. That yeah. evolution, or should I say adaptation, as yeah. where. Why did HOG see the need? Because, you see, we have a lot of businesses in Nigeria here mm. who still 
practice that principle, like you mentioned, brick and mortar, and you love the physical presence, but everything, the world is being digitalized. Exactly. People are moving. Exactly. Why, how did you, and why did you see that need and decide that, okay, let's uh, pivot over to uh, an online space? Yeah, it, it was a story of ideation level mm. uh, to the level of uh, uh, tentative action. Okay. Our tentative action was uh, starting as a brick and mortar. Mm. But where we are going is actually e-commerce. Mm. But we started first with that. Like I rightly said, our parent company, Banner Plus, embraced us. Mm. That yes, uh, uh, at a particular point in time, our parent uh, company signed up on a big e-commerce platform as mm. at that time. In fact, they were giving one of the best sellers on the platform. So it triggered us like, wow. So if people are doing this, that means we can, we can do something magic with this. Mm. Then we, take, we took that boost there, you know, create a niche in furniture and furniture. Mm. You know, as at that time, by 2015, when we were, we were full e-commerce, we still created a structure to allow, to accommodate for different sellers to sign up on the, on the platform. And uh, it has been awesome so far. And as so you're saying that it runs some, some sort of an agency way, such as sellers and buyers, you are in exactly, central exactly. Uh, yeah. unit where sellers and buyers meet. Ex exactly. Say, oh, but it's all based on furniture. Yeah, on furniture, home office and garden furniture. Uh, and aside that, we also do bespoke pieces, by the way. Okay. And, uh, yeah. So uh, when now, when if somebody wants to order a bespoke, are you, you are, are you talking to this company or you are talking to a vendor or something in... There, the, there you go. This is the loop of... We talk of e-commerce uh, sector in the country, yeah. and uh, it's bringing more challenges to the mm -hmm. sector. Uh, when uh, a company is so machinist, you know, you want to recruit sellers on the platform, uh, but uh, you now leave the so-called customers, prospective customers, you know, you leave them in the hands of the seller. You know, the seller will come on, the, on your site, you only place another. Nobody's communicating. There is this. There is no woman-like communication, mm. no woman agent I call, mm. a customer care to relate, to be so thorough on that particular order. Reason why, you, you, reason why this cliche of what I ordered versus what I got. What I got, exactly. Is, so you are talking to a bot. You are just something. talking to a chat box. Mm. You are not talking to a woman being, yeah, you, you know, be. that would, you know, let you know that, like our culture, you know, furniture, we let every other seller know that, yes, as we need you, we also need these customers. And for the business to try, these are the do's and don't. Don't take e-commerce as a signpost. Mm. What you don't have, take it down. Mm. If you have this particular color on the site, let it be. If you don't have it, take it down. Mm. So it, there will, there, it will not be an issue of, I'm placing another for this, and they told me it's, it's, not, it's no longer available. But if that happens between yeah. a, 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 cost, a, a vendor on the site and a client, mm. is there any sort of... Uh, uh, do, do you do you implement any sort of is there any sort of uh, I don't know are there checks and balances to ensure that that kind of you know, maybe a, a, a punitive measure or something is there anything you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, before I answer that, uh, uh, for a customer to come to our site and say it will be furniture or see you let me place another, we every other coming in, you know, uh, there's somebody there to, you know, uh, to uh, to check that order, converse with the seller, and as well converse with the customer. So mm. there would not be an issue of, uh, you know, uh, this is what I want, this is what I want, this is what is, you know. So there wouldn't be. And in such case, it, it really happens with us. Okay. Because at the back end, there is human agent handling that order. Okay. You know, on behalf, as you are safeguarding the interest of the seller, we also safeguard the interest of the customer. Now, this, the next question that you know will ask is that, are they, uh, the, the, are, are there fees to the e-commerce company? How do you make your own money? Is it from the vendor, from the client, or how? Of course, uh, from the from the vendor, from okay. the seller, from yeah. the seller, and all of that. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah, we know we're talking about. You've mentioned about some challenges with mm, yeah. e-commerce. Now, yeah. as a country, yes, we know that. You know, you have issues with uh, internet supply from the ISPs and yeah, all exactly. of that. What other challenges have you encountered working in? Uh, yes, in of the course. Digital space? Uh, Taking into cognizance the infancy state at which e-commerce sector is in the country, forget about the noise, uh, this and that, it's still at its infancy level. And the challenges, are, uh, number one for me is, I'll say it's a trust issue. Mm. Yeah, customer will say, hello, HOG, please, I need this. Can you deliver to my location, Naba? Okay. Moving from Lagos to Aba, Aba. on payment or delivery. Huh. <laughs> you know <that> <laughs> You see that that thing has made a number. <laughs> I know I cannot mention some brands that have that have run out of business because of POD. You exactly. get there and the person say, Ah, this is uh, not what I want. This is not what I Meanwhile, want. 
uh, mm -hmm. expenses have been incurred exactly when it comes to moving it out oh, account is all those expenses, expenses going to, to yeah, it yeah. has moved out of a factory somebody has yeah. you know, transportation and all of that yeah and when this happens consistently exactly. you're going to run somebody out of business yeah, exactly and, and second and secondly uh second challenge that i see is that uh uh the overzealousness of uh uh different states uh agencies on the highway oh, yeah it's also uh, it's also one way or the other like mitigate a smooth running of commerce in the country because for a driver moving from point a let's take for instance moving from lagos to Aba, you know before i get to Aba, i must have you know uh, got into a part different, different states so a different agency will tell you uh this so this paper will take you all over nigeria once they get to point b another Another payment again. What's the point? So I saw, it's, I saw a it's video effective. of somebody of uh, uh, I think it was tubers of yam from Benue State. He was coming to Lagos, and this guy had over twenty to twenty-five different bills or receipts or invoices. I'm telling I said, you, the food I'm is actually you. the food. The, the, the food is actually not so expensive. Mm. By the time I put in all these costs, mm. it gets to the end consumer. Exactly. And so that is also a challenge. Uh, another challenge there is insecurity. But we thank God for the dispensation of government that we have presently. Mm -hmm. A big shout out to the federal government. You know, we can see that they've been able to doze the threat of insecurity, insecurity. in the country. Yeah, yeah. So it's getting better. They can On still... a normal day, if things were okay, yeah. night time would have been a wonderful time to transport. Exactly. Place, but then those, that's the time when it, is, it, can, it, can, it can be uh, problematic. So uh, moving forward, I, one, one thing I like about HOG is that the ability to adapt to where as times were. Looking exactly. on the horizon, what, what would you say is uh, an impact or important factor of business that HOG holds on to that would still make you relevant in the next, say, 5, 10, 15 years? Mm, uh, uh, we are very thorough in, any, every, in, in, in anything we do. We are very, very thorough. And uh, uh, our mission is that, uh, to become one of the you know, our top e-commerce in the country and not even the country alone, mm. the whole world, you know, exactly. setting, setting the standard, okay. sanitizing the sector. Mm. Uh, so uh, uh, if we throw on that part, uh, I'm very sure that, yes, in the next year, <laughs> years to come, uh, I'm very sure some we are going to grow bigger than this. Final words, with all the experience that you have from HOG, to somebody who wants to start up a business to pay pivot mm. to online services, well, what, what just, what's that one advice that you can give to somebody out there? Uh, well, the advice I can give is, uh, uh, you know business, you know that any business that wants to succeed in this country that we are, mm. that wants to thrive, uh, must look for, you know, uh, taking into cognizance how Nigeria is so hard working. You need to look for ways to make the life of these people easier on a daily basis. Okay. You know, you have to look for ways to, you know, to solve a particular problem. You know, if you are able to, uh, definitely your business will grow. And this you is what HOG has been doing. Find the need that you meet it. I know. Well done, HOG, and uh, this you. is uh, wishing you all the best. Thank you, sir. Well done. Thanks. All right, that's it. I hope you were able to pick up one or two things from our SME. And that's the end of the show this morning. Of course, uh, Titi and uh, Danny, who, of course, is sending me a, a paycheck this morning. She knows why she would send that. Danny. Why am I getting my paycheck this morning? You get it, don't worry, Mike. You get it. Yeah. Get it. <laughs> Good. It's been a marvelous Monday, yes? It has been. It has. I want yeah. to say a big thank you to everyone who mm. joined us as guests on yeah. the show. And mm. to you watching, <laughs> we love you. And one more time, a big happy birthday to my girls, mm -hmm. Amber and Ruby. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday. Mommy loves you. Daddy loves you. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Small chops and cake coming your way. <laughs> and coming our way too. Yeah, I didn't know you eat small chops. <laughs> See you tomorrow. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>